Good evening, everyone. How's it going out there? Welcome back here to a Friday night. Hope everyone's having a good one out there so far. January 2nd, 2026 is the date. Haven't messed up on that yet. Uh, it is about uh, 8.50 in the p.m. here, California time. Latest activity here on the globe shows a, uh, looks like a 2.6 across the Indonesia area. Pretty quiet up here around Japan right now, uh, but it's probably not going to stay that way for long. Uh, a little bit of older activity down across New Zealand. Uh, man, looking at a lot of the activity happening over here across the uh, Mexico area. That's a portion of the Middle America Trench and also uh, the eastern edge here of the Caribbean plate. We had a 5.5 out there earlier. So there's um, some squeezing going on here across the Caribbean plate. A lot of times what goes on here across the west and uh, South America here normally puts a, a big squeeze on the Caribbean plate. If you look at the general stress movement here, look at the South America plate moving north northwest here. When things are moving out here across this area, well, we get uh, get that squeeze being pushed on the, the Caribbean plate there. And that's where the activity is kind of stirring up right now, it looks like. Uh, there's all the activity off the coast here in Mexico. Well, actually, can't see off the coast because this is inland a little bit. Uh, 6.5 earthquake early this morning, 21 miles deep. I say that's shallow because this is a portion of the Middle America Trench where uh, we can get some much deeper, deeper, bigger earthquakes out here. So this is fairly shallow in respect to that. Uh, it is, you know, a little bit deeper than your typical six to seven mile deep earthquake. But this earthquake was felt pretty broadly across the area. And 21 miles deep is nothing. Uh, it's actually, that, to me, that's a, considered a relatively shallow earthquake. Uh, it has been reviewed there earlier this morning. Quite a few folks, uh, you know, I've seen social media posts all over the place reporting uh you know, some, some strong shaking from that uh, earthquake earlier today. Of course, that's the largest one so far this year. I mean, we just started off, but who knows what we have in store here. Number of aftershocks in there as well. Nothing big. Um, I don't even see any five-pointers in there. That's a little odd. A bunch of fours, a lot of fours here. But, uh, you know, I there's got it should be at least a couple fives in there. So we may have to watch this, see how the... Uh, behavior of the aftershock sequences there um, uh, take place here throughout the night. Just a little odd. We should have seen at least a, a five-pointer or two in there from a 6.5. Uh, let's see. Nothing major going on here across the rest of the area. Just oil-filled operations and earthquake activity they go hand-in-hand hand out there, it looks like. A lot of uh, earthquake movement. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, really only one earthquake there from this morning, but I, you know, I just want to double check and verify that uh, because it's been a little active up there recently with some earthquake activity. And for the most part, a lot of this is not being reported. 11 o'clock this morning for a, what was that, 1.1? Actually, uh, 10 o'clock, take that back. So 10 o'clock my time, which would be 11 over here for a 1.1. So that's probably a 1.1 right there, mountain time. Well, I'm looking at this image here, there's probably quite a few ones in here, maybe even some upper ones. Uh, not for sure why only one got reported, but there's a handful more there happening. Nothing big, but uh, the multitude counts here a little bit higher than what's being shown there on the map. Earthquake there on the eastern side of the Seattle Fault as well. That's from, uh, looks like that was from yesterday. Got to watch that. That's Pretty hazardous fault system that runs directly underneath Seattle, capable of a 7.5 earthquake. Hayward Fault, uh, one little earthquake on it uh, this morning. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, got a little earthquake there outside of Mineral. Um, seven miles deep for a 2.2. Seen these little earthquakes out here recently. Just a kind of a general sign of increasing strain out here across the northern edge of the Sierra Nevada mountains and the eastern rift zone out here. The, or, well, the uh, not a rift out here. I meant the uh, shear zone, the Walker Lane shear zone out here. Uh, but aside from that, looks generally quiet up there for now. Nothing going on across the Cascadia subduction zone. The slow slip event map shows us that we have a little bit um, up north there around Seattle. And uh, towards the Oregon area, underneath this area, we've got 48 epicenters there into the Cascadia subduction zone. Nothing big for now. 
Uh, Southern California down here. I'm still kind of watching for some migration from that six-pointer that stirred up way south, but that may just be a little bit too far south down here. Watch this activity up here along the uh, uh, Gulf of California region where there's not a whole lot happening right now. Pretty quiet. I don't see any type of northward uh, momentum or pressure uh, quakes happening right now. Uh, let's see. Nothing above 2.5 out here today, right? Aside from out in Nevada and uh, over around Utah area. Looks like a little earthquake there from last night. Uh, let's see. Alaska region. Still seeing a bunch of aftershock activity up there. That's um, still pretty active there. Nothing big happening. I mean, we had that 5.7 aftershock there yesterday or the day before. I can't recall. Been a little sleep deprived here recently. Still am. I went to bed somewhat early last night, but I was up at 5 o'clock. See what stress and worry does, but, you know, I, I got a good reason for it. But uh, we'll talk about Chomper here in, uh, at the end of this update video, which is my, my doggy. Uh, earthquake activity around the uh, Anchorage area, it looks like. A 2.9 coming in to the west. Nothing big happening up there for now. I mean, kind of look at the, the uh, earthquake 3D globe here to see where things are happening at. And, um, you know, there's two... Uh, maybe two or three specific locations out here. Some uptick. The Indonesia area, which is very typical of movement. Um, Middle America Trench and uh, you know, around the Caribbean plate, fairly active as well. Um, kind of hard to say here. You know, Japan, it, it, it can stay quiet like that for a little bit. Um, it's a little, little odd to see it that quiet, though. I mean, there's only, what, one earthquake up north here along the Kuro Kamchatka? Um, I believe there's only one. And the reason why it's showing two there is because one agency is reporting a 4.7 different location. Uh, the EMSC is reporting this as a 4.8 different location. So the uh, differences there in the data will show up as two different quakes there on the globe. So technically, it's actually really quiet out here right now. A little odd. Uh, some movement around northern India as well, across the eastern side here of the Himalaya Mountains. Um, nothing big. A couple of earthquakes out there, though, on the uh, globe. Mediterranean region, uh, fairly quiet looking. The Atlantic Ocean, super quiet. Just kind of keep an eye here on the Middle America Trench right now on the Caribbean Plate. This is definitely, uh, you know, with the 6.5 there, we've seen that 5-pointer stir up a couple hours later. Now we got a 3.2 in the area, southern end of the Middle America Trench. So this is uh, pretty active out here right now. Got to watch that. Could see some larger activity out there. Uh, space weather activity. Man, I am just super drained. I haven't been this tired in so long. We got uh, some aurora activity to talk about here. G2 class storm potentially coming up here tonight, right? Where are we at? Let's go take a look here. That's a G2 forecast or G2 class storm forecast. If we get up to the KP index of six or so, right now uh, we peaked up around KP index of five, which is a G1 class storm. Um, I guess we better check out the speed and data here. I don't see the arrival of the CME yet. When it does arrive here at the planet. Um, we would see the spike there on the density go up. So I don't think we've seen it yet. Has yet to come. In fact, it looks like the time frame here is around 03 to 06 UTC time. And we are at, well, we're, we're just about at 05 here. So it should be coming in here in the next hour or so. I don't think it'd be a late arrival, but give it a couple hours here. I don't think it missed us either because looking at the Space Weather Prediction Center uh, guidance model there, it looked like we should get a, a decent plasma hit from that large flare that blasted off there a couple days ago. Um, so we'll, we'll watch for that. You know, it's not not a done deal as far as being a dud uh, yet. You know, and I say if three hours goes by and we don't see it, then it, we could probably say that maybe missed us. It went somewhere. <laughs> just not in the direction of the Earth. Northeast, southwest, who knows? Um, but watch for that tonight. Uh, flaring activity. I dropped mine down to about 1% chance here for an X flare. Notice how the uh, instability charts here, pretty much flatlining. We're not getting that sizzle anymore. Kind of like a plate of fajitas at a Mexican restaurant. You know, when they bring it out, just 
sitting there sizzling on the plate on the uh, on the platter there. This uh, going to going down here is flatlining, so that's a sign that the sunspots there are stabilizing. Uh, let's take a look here at these sunspots. This one up here was the one that produced the M flare uh, and subsequent CME, but that's looking rather weak right now. This one's taking a major separation break here. Notice that there's nothing forming in there either. So this is pretty much done. Um, let's see. This one kind of got a little stretch going on there as well. But we'll watch that. See what it looks like tomorrow. Looks like it may be developing a little bit. But other than that, you know, it's, we are looking at some, uh, well, maybe some sea flare activity if we're lucky from a number of these sunspots. But I'm not expecting much. 1% or less for an X flare, these guys show in 10%, but I do my own forecast observing the sun there for quite a while. I know all about these magnetograms uh, and what to look for in terms of forecasting the solar flares. 1% uh, or less for X flare. I'm thinking probably about maybe 30 to 40% chance there for an M flare, but that's kind of going down now as well. 100% uh, beautiful moon out there. Uh, we don't see it here in Northern California. Well, we can't see it. We don't see it. We can't see it because we got a lot of rain coming in here right now, overcast and rainy conditions. Uh, speaking of that, let's see what we got out there on the Goes West satellite. I want to show you guys this beautiful Pacific storm that's spinning out here in the Pacific. I'll stir this one up here. Look at it beautiful area of low pressure out offshore here notice all these lightning strikes out here offshore that's a lot of instability associated with that low pressure system in fact it looks like it's developing a surface low right here here's the main area of low pressure but also down here looks like there's a, um, a new low developing probably surface low. that's crazy so we are looking at maybe some uh, severe weather out here in northern California uh, for tomorrow uh, let me show you guys the Storm Prediction Center model uh, where we have a chance of some tornado activity out here across Northern California and portions of uh, uh, Southeast down there in Florida. But, um, you know, not too often do you see tornado potential in California, but most of the time it occurs in the spring and fall months. But when we get these strong winter storms here, uh, we can we can get uh, the chances out here going. Redding area down to Fresno, it looks like. They're in the Sacramento, Sacramento area and portion of the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, tornado threat. Might even have some wind damage there across the coast. Nothing really for hail across the west coast, but down there across uh, portions of the south there a little bit. But uh, we'll watch for that. See how that develops tomorrow. Either way, we got you know a decent uh, amount of precipitation coming in there for California. And we can check out the... Um, you know, maybe what this may look like tomorrow as far as these storms coming in. This is going to be for tonight. Got a lot of heavy rain coming in. It's behind that main system there where the low uh, surface low has developed that will pop up thunderstorms here in the Sacramento and the San Joaquin Valley. So this would be around peak heating. Um, right about there it looks like. It does look like some storms mainly on the east side of the Sacramento Valley. The, the the NAM 3KM model not showing much. Let me see what this one shows around. Uh, this is six about six o'clock or so. See, even so, these guys are showing mostly east side of the valley. Uh, storms firing up, Butte County, Yuba County, Sacramento area. So we'll watch it. You know, these are just. It, you know, it just kind of a forecast model guidance here. It just it depends on what takes place there. Sometimes those things are right, sometimes they're not. So, um, seismograph stations out there pretty quiet. One little earthquake on the Philippine station. So, update on Chomper here real quick. Just short, not a whole lot of news yet. We're still waiting on blood work uh, for some kidney levels to go down. Um, you know, they do think he had some kidney damage there from, uh, you know. The stones that are going on, they're just stacked, they're just stacked back to back there uh, in his, um, down across his uh, uh, uterus area and whatnot. It, uh, it, I mean, there's at least 12 or 13. They can't go in there and operate. They tried to push them back, you know, into the bladder, but it, 
if it was one or two, that'd be different. But this is something that they haven't seen before. And even the, the folks down there at UC Davis are like, uh, you know, they're just kind of in shock. But even these folks and their high-tech equipment and stuff like that and the knowledge that they have in medicine, veterinary medicine, they won't do anything um, if his levels are elevated as far as the, uh, the kidneys and whatnot goes. So, you know, because you have to be able to, um, your body has to be in a stable working order um, to go through surgery. And I, I would hate to have them go in and perform a surgery and him not make it. You know, and it's a little scary. So right now, at least his bladder is getting drained. He's getting the fluids that he needs, hydration. Um, I think they have him on amoxicillin there, if I remember. They did put him on ampicillin originally uh, when he first came in down to the local one here. Um, but just just kind of waiting, folks. It's a waiting game. Um, I got to wait and see how the levels go. Um, but we've reached uh, past our original goal. Um, the GoFundMe there is a, a financial safety net here uh, because I was not prepared for anything like this at all. And it's crazy how expensive veterinary uh, medicine and hospitalization is. And these guys want stuff like right up front too. You know, it's not like you go to the hospital, you get treated, and you get sent a bill. Nope, <laughs> it's not like that. It's uh, it's almost like buying a car. Okay, before you drive it off a lot, we need 80%, you know, or 50% down. It's it, it's pretty crazy. But I can understand, you know, why they need that, why they have it set up like that. But anyway, I'll provide further updates, folks, when they become available here. Um, still not out of the woods yet. It's just kind of a limbo game. I can't say game, limbo, limbo, um... I don't even know the word that I'm looking for. I'm just in limbo myself because I haven't gotten any sleep. For whatever reason, I was up at 5 o'clock today in the morning. I wish I could sleep until 5 in the afternoon. That'd be, I'd be just bright-eyed and bushy-tailed all day long. I'd probably stay up all night. But I'm done. Um, I did convince Missy Mimi's here to call it an early night. It's 9 o'clock here, so after this update video gets uploaded and posted, we are out. Uh, Friday night party poopers. Yes, we are. Anyway, have a good one, folks. Enjoy your Friday night. Stay safe out there. Um, just going to keep an eye there on the Caribbean plate because that's, well, for one, an area that's really standing out right now. Watch this area up north and down south here. A lot of squeezing going on there across that little plate. Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here in the morning for the Saturday morning update. Take care, folks. Stay safe.